Well, studies and coursework have changed slightly um, last year with the body massage diploma and you are no longer needing to fill out an evaluation form for your case studies, which was a separate form before. So I think they've streamlined and made the case study and individual treatment forms the same, which is going to help everybody. So hopefully in this presentation, I can clarify exactly what you need to produce for your case studies. Um, now that COVID-19 has affected all the coursework, you will no longer be putting your coursework in a folder and bringing it to me when we have the practical. Now that the practicals are only five hours, I don't have time in that time to teach you and mark your case studies. So please send me by email your consultation form and your write-up form for every case study that you do. Um, you only need one consultation form per case study person, but if you use them again as an individual treatment, you do need to have one consultation form with the write-ups and the treatments that you do for that. So hopefully this is going to clarify what you have to do and enjoy any problems, get back to me and email me or give me a ring. So the case study um, treatment requirements for your body massage course is required that you do 20 individual treatments. Now this means you can do legs, stomach, arms, head, face, neck, feet. Um, you have to write up 20 individual treatments. Now, if you do a full body massage, then that can be five or six treatments on that one person. But you do need to use a little bit of poetic license, change the dates a little bit, make sure that you do a client profile, which is different for each area that you do, why that area is relevant to the client to have it treated. So a little bit of poetic license. Home care advice needs to be different as well. So if you're going to do that, then you need to dig deep and make your home care advice difference for each treatment. And also the client would give you feedback on each individual area. So um, the write up forms are the same now as the case studies and individual treatments. So I'll go through each one as we go through the presentation. Case studies, you need to do eight people twice. Um, so they have to be full body treatments. They can't be short treatments. And you need to pick people who will have the whole body done. The write-up, as I said, is the same as above, except for CPD requirements. You do need to fill in any extra training or um, extra learning or teaching that you might need for your practice. During normal times, other than COVID-19, your case study would start with a personal profile. However, during COVID-19, the examiners are not reviewing the folders, so it's no longer necessary for you to write a personal profile for your folder. So you don't need to email me a personal profile. However, should we go back to having an external examination with an ITEC examiner, she will obviously want to have a folder with everything in it then. So at the moment, when we know there isn't any practical external examiners coming, we can email your work to me. And then if they do come, um, I think we might have to print it all off and shove it back in a folder for them and then they like the personal profiles, makes a difference to their exam if they know who they're going to actually examine and a little bit about each one of you. You do need to have a consultation form for each of your clients, and you do need to have the treatment write-ups for every treatment that you do. And for the case studies, you need to do an overall evaluation. Your personal profile is about you, who you are, why you wish to become a therapist, what you hope to achieve, what you're going to bring to your treatments, what other life skills do you already have that are going to be very useful. Being positive and constructive, maybe include a photograph of yourself so that 
when the examiner reads this before your exam, she can relate what you're saying to a photograph of you so that when she comes into the classroom, she can see who you are. So maybe about half a page, certainly no more than one A4 sheet is necessary for the personal profile. Consultation form, it's vital that it's filled out correctly, so please make sure you check these forms, that there are no personal details on it, so maybe a Christian name, but no address, just saying Exeter or Tiverton or wherever it is that they live, no telephone numbers or email addresses. Make sure that all the questions are answered, and if they're not applicable, then put NA. We need to know all the medical history, and when you look at these forms, there's a whole list of different diseases and disorders. But maybe if they suffer from something that's not there, that needs to be added on with the date that they were suffering from it. So past operations are relevant, any major illnesses are relevant as well. And do remember that the contraindications list associated with the body massage are for you while you are training to make your treatment safe. Once you're qualified, then the judgment call is yours and the list of contraindications is vastly reduced. If somebody has a contraindication that they've ticked on the front page of your consultation form, then you need to either A, send them back to their GP to get permission and make sure it's safe for them to have a treatment, or they need to decide that they sign a self-indemnification. On the other side of the form, they can ring whichever's appropriate and sign and date the back of the consultation form. I can't tell you how many times the consultation form is either not signed, not dated, and doesn't have your name on it. So do please try and get this right from the very beginning. We will also, when we're looking at your write-up, especially for home care advice, when it comes to the eating section of your client's consultation form, how many vegetables they eat, what exercise they have, and what they do to relax, we will be looking to make sure that the home care advice is pertinent to your client and is not just a generic statement that could be about anybody. You do have to make it relevant to your client. When you sit to do your consultation with your client when you're at home, sit at a table side by side with no barriers in between you and your client and make sure you use positive body language so no crossed arms, crossed legs and using a combination of open and closed questions. So if you want to find out about your client's medical history, then you're going to use open questions, um, which will allow the client to embroider their answer. And then a closed question to clarify details. Closed questions are questions that you would reply yes or no to. Do watch your verbal and your non-verbal communication with your client and make sure you ascertain their lifestyle and their profile, what's important to them in life, what's their everyday life pressures like. Explain the treatment procedure. Some people who haven't had a massage before don't know what to take off. So you're going to um, ask them to strip down to their underwear. It's optional whether women have, have bras on or off, it's up to you. But do make sure you tell them what to take off and which end of the couch to lie down on. Plan your treatment, so making sure that you take into consideration religious, moral, social beliefs, as well as contraindications. Questions must be relevant to the treatment, obviously, and you're going to be sympathetic and sensitive when you ask these questions. Make sure that your questions are friendly, not interrogating. Outline the treatment benefits and how they should feel, and maybe the possible reactions to treatment, which we're going to talk about later on and um, use our forms rather than generating your own at this stage. Once you're qualified, if you want to generate your own forms, then that's absolutely fine. Consent for your treatments is a legal requirement. And for your case studies, you have an evaluation form you need to give your clients to fill out for each treatment, but also they need to sign the consultation form. So clearly highlight any relevant contraindications 
and whether GP consent has been obtained, whether the client is going to self-indemnify and they need to sign it and date it. Your case study should be 16 years of age or above. Um, but if you did do a treatment on an under 16 year old in your clinic, then you would need to make sure that the parent or guardian was actually in the room while you're doing the treatment. So on your treatment record, you're going to put your, the client's name, treatment number and the date. And the client profile for the first treatment is going to just set the scene, paint a picture of the client's problems, stresses, background, a short profile about the client. On the second treatment though, this client profile will be more about how did they feel after the last treatment, did they have any possible reactions to treatment, what improvements they felt, did they sleep better, were they running to the loo, did they have an alleviation of their discomfort and pain in their joints. Then the treatment plan for a full body massage is going to be um, where you concentrated on, where were the tensions in this client's body. You know, if they have stiff neck or shoulders, then you're going to mention the muscles in this, in this area. This helps you learn the muscles. So do look up a few muscles. If somebody says they've got a neck problem, have a look up if it's the back of the neck. You know, I'm going to work on the levator scapula, the splenius capitis making sure I relax the trapezius to get into the muscles below. And what specific movements did you use? Please start learning the names of the movements and the benefits to using that movements. So if you were going to do a really relaxing treatment, you would use more effleurage. So I use lots of effleurage to relax my client. Um, effleurage particularly on the back. The back is the key to relaxation. So if I can really relax the client when I do the back treatment, then she'll get a lot more benefit out of the treatment. Then I'm going to work a bit deeper with petrissage to squeeze the muscles and release tension. And I might apply frictions around the shoulder blade, which are analgesic and are going to be pain relieving. So at this stage, you're demonstrating to the examiner that you know your movements, you know some of your muscle names, and you're going to tell her that you know what these movements are about and when and why you're going to use them. Continuing with the treatment write-up, your client will have to give you feedback for each treatment that you do, whether it's a case study or an individual treatment. And you will do this in class as well as at home. So you need to ask your client to give you two strengths and two weaknesses of the treatment they've just had. So strengths being what they thought that you did really well and weaknesses being areas that they feel that you can improve. Do try and encourage your um, feedback because you are learning and it's very easy for relatives to say, oh, it was wonderful, um, but you do need them to nitpick a little bit so that you learn by your mistakes. So home care advice you need to discuss with your clients, making it individual to each client, reading their consultation form and not just making it generic. We want to recommend water to flush out the toxins and waste products. Discuss the possible reactions to treatment without frightening your client to death. Um, give them exercise advice pertinent to their consultation form. So if they do a lot of exercise, you might recommend that they do some stretching or do a different type of exercise like swimming if they run all the time. Relaxation advice might be um, having some me time, doing some meditation or some yoga, sitting and quietly reading a book, having a hot bath, doing something that, that brings them in the moment. Dietary advice. Um, I'm not expecting you to be a dietitian, but you are expected to know what the government recommendations are with diet. You know, five fruit and vegetables in the UK, 10 in Europe. So you might make smart recommendations which are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and what time frame. So you might re recommend a banana at 11 o'clock each day. And then that means that when you come to revisit your home care advice for your second treatment, you've got something to revisit and find out 
whether they're actually doing that or not. So you do need to be specific and you need to be coming across as a knowledgeable therapist in your write ups. When you come to giving home care advice, it's a good idea to discuss with your clients the possible reactions to treatment. They can be any of these things written here, nausea, headaches, dizziness, maybe um, skin changes like erythema where it's red and maybe a little bit itchy for a while. Um, they might feel tired after their treatment and that's a direct result of lymph drainage. It's a good sign because it means that you've worked hard and you've um, had a good detoxification in the body. They might feel that they're a little bit stiff and achy, especially for clients who were achy before you started. But all of these things are temporary and should disappear within the next 24 hours. A healing crisis tends to be just that. It's one of these symptoms. It might even be an emotional um, period where somebody feels very tearful. They might even have a good cry, especially if they've been bottling things up a lot and suddenly you release all that tension and also the emotions that go with it. So as part of your write-up, you do have to include that you've discussed the possible reactions to treatment with your client, quite normal reactions, any of these are absolutely fine. If it was anything more serious than this and was lasting for several days, then I would suggest you get your client to ring you back. Do be careful of suggesting the whole list to your client and reeling it off. Um, also, I would be careful of giving them a list um, in a handwritten way so that they've got this list that they can focus on that may not be helpful for some clients who the, the idea and suggestion of a possible reaction to treatment is all they need to actually experience it. So I would just go through some of the ones that are a little bit more pertinent quickly after the treatment. So your aftercare needs to be in terms of exercise, relaxation and diet and please include subheadings under your aftercare for that. Um, you're going to refer to the client's exercise section of their consultation form discussing what exercise they do, so being specific about what they do. If they do an awful lot of exercise then quite often the only thing you can really do is um, write about what they already do and maybe remind them to warm up and cool down after treatments, especially the cool down afterwards is vital for avoiding injury. It might be an elderly person though who doesn't do anything and just because they're restricted in mobility doesn't mean to say that they can't climb the stairs a couple more times a day for exercise. They could walk to the bottom of the garden and back several times a day, weather permitting. They could walk to the shop for the paper instead of having it delivered. So making sure that you make your home care advice pertinent to your client. Relaxation, this is not just about relaxing more. This is about discussing how somebody relaxes. What about a hot bath at the end of the day? Pilates, yoga, deep breathing, wandering around the garden, just enjoying nature, listening to the birds, smelling the flowers. With dietary advice, it does have to be specific to the government guidelines. So you are expected to know that there are five fruit and vegetables a day, but in Europe, it's 10. Um, reducing too much coffee, too much tea, making sure that anything more than seven a day is an addiction level, and your client realizes it's not good to do anything to extreme, particularly alcohol, salt, too much sugar, making sure they drink plenty of water to flush out the kidneys, the toxins and the waste products, and using SMART recommendations. So SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and give them a time frame. So this is all about you becoming not just a lay person anymore, but actually becoming a therapist. This slide is about what you can do to advise your client to prolong the treatment benefits. 
So by avoiding stimulants for the next 12 hours, like alcohol, tea, coffee, non-prescription drugs, and by healthily eating your five fruit and vegetables a day, having a low salt diet, low sugar diet, drinking lots of water to flush out the kidneys and waste products and help toxin elimination can all help to prolong the effects of the treatment. So making sure that you advise the client, you know, to cut down on smoking, to cut down on alcohol. This will improve their sleep patterns. Think about hobbies and lifestyle, me time, um, any, anything you can advise for self-treatment like hot baths, anything you can recommend for relaxation is all going to improve the client's well-being and extend the benefits of the treatment. When it comes to treatments though, if somebody has a chronic condition and they're very, very tense and stressed, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to do two treatments in the first week. If you want to get fit, you wouldn't dream of trying to get fit by going to the gym once a week. If you want to get fit, you want to do it twice a week, if not three times a week. And it's the same with an exercise, pro, um, a massage program. If you want to get on top of your tension and stress really quickly and alleviate pain in a joint, you can't do it once a week. It has to be twice a week, sometimes three, depending on the client's pocket. But the closer the treatments are together in the early days, then as the benefits are improving the mobility of the client, they can reduce it down to weekly, then fortnightly, then maybe once a month just as an MOT. At the bottom of your treatment record card, you're going to write down a self-critique. This is about what you felt about the treatment you've just performed. And they should contain lots of I words. I found the client really uh, relaxed or tense and lots of lactic acid crystals in the rhomboid area. Um, or I really enjoyed this treatment, although the client complained of being cold or I must maybe do something different next time, maybe have more heat, more music. I felt a little bit out of my depth, maybe learn the order of the movements. This section is all about what we would say to you if we were watching the treatment, but you say it about yourself. So it's about self-reflection. You might also put in here how, when you recommend to your client to have the next treatment and whether you want any correction in your technique. Maybe um, I need to just see the head, face and neck massage again, or I need to go through the hand massage again because I can't quite get to grips with that technique. So this is about your self-reflection and it's a very good habit to get into. If you start doing it now, you will do it when you're at home as well. And sometimes, you know, with no, we most of us work on our own. So without other people working with you, it's a very good habit to get into criticizing and constructively maybe praising yourself, you know, for what a good job you did. CPD requirements are for case studies only, and ITEC want you to consider what on ongoing training you might need. So this might be a refresher of a particular technique or movement, maybe considering a CPD course that might take your treatments to a deeper level for the shoulders, or an on-site seated massage, which might be good for clients that are pregnant or can't climb on the couch. Or you might want to extend your treatments into a more relaxing gift voucher range so that you add a facial onto that treatment. There are also other courses that you might want to consider, like adding aromatherapy, adding essential oils as another dimension to your treatments, or going into deeper massage altogether by learning the sports massage which then you can proceed to work more in the sports arena, um, maybe go to the Olympics with sports level four. Or you might consider having a complete change of um, training and sit down and do the reflexology um, to break up your working day, which can be quite energetic 
through the day. It's quite nice to sit down and have a different variety of treatments to do. So your overall conclusion and reflective practice comes at the end of the two treatments you've done on each of your eight clients. So you need to write two paragraphs here. One on what the client learned, how they benefited, what treatments do you recommend long term? And then a second paragraph about your learning curve. So what you learned as a therapist by doing this particular person, where do you go from here? What you might have done differently if you'd done the, had the time again? Please include personal information which is related to that client and the reflection that you give. But do make sure that you also include in here what you've recommended that your client do for treatments from now on. Is it once a month, once a week, you know, being specific. So client care is about looking after your client while they're in your treatment room. So first of all, you're going to explain the treatment routine to your client. So explain you're going to start with the back, back of the legs, turn them over, front of the legs, feet, stomach, arms, head, face and neck. What to take off? is a good one. Otherwise, you'll end up turning around and finding your clients got their vest on or their socks or something. Help the client on and off the couch. It's part of your exam procedure to help the client off the couch. So you should practice your towel technique for getting them off the couch. Please clean the feet before the treatment. After is only necessary in the summer months if people are wearing sandals. They don't necessarily um, want to be slipping and sliding all around the town when they leave. You might cover the eyes. I find this very disconcerting if you've got a client who's looking at you while you're doing the treatment. Um, I think it does help them to be quieter and focus inwardly on what your hands are doing and, and relax if they focus on deep breathing. Silence can be very loud. So a nice, soft, gentle uh, relaxation music in the background is always good. And it focuses the client again on just relaxing and not having to entertain or talk to you. Sometimes it's a good idea to give your client permission to just relax and be quiet. An under blanket, electric blanket in the winter is fantastic because it gets the heat in the right place for the client and the room then you can have a little bit cooler so that you don't overheat and get too warm. Ensure your client's comfort with warmth with support pillows. You are supposed to put pillows underneath the ankles when the client is lying face down or prone is lying face down. When they're lying face up, you should have pillows under their knees to support the lower back. If you slightly tilt the pelvic girdle while you're lying on your back, then it, it alleviates the pressure for people who have lower back pain. In fact, the more pillows under the knees, the better it's going to be for somebody with back pain. If you've got a client with large breasts, you might put a small pillow underneath their stomach to take the pressure off the breasts. And the same if you've got somebody in the early stages of pregnancy. Um, you might put a little pillow there to support the breasts. Do reassure the client, explain to them what you're going to do. Obviously not so often that you're waking them up and you're being irritating. Um, also check the pressure with them, make sure that it's firm enough at all times. Adapt your technique to suit the client. So if they're in the first uh, three days of their period, you're going to avoid the stomach. When you're doing a full body massage though, do try and get clients who are going to have the whole treatment done. I know you can't avoid contraindications, but do make sure that it's not just client preference. We need people who will have the whole full body routine done. Do remove the medium, especially if somebody's wearing clothes that might be stained by it. It should be client led conversation throughout the treatment. And do leave a little bit of relaxation time at the end of the treatment, maybe while you wash your hands, get your client a glass of water so that they can have a little bit of coming around time. Professional behaviour and code of ethics is important to you as a therapist. Nobody is going to be 
watching you all the time when you're in a treatment room. So this is about just making sure that you are professional in the way you handle your clients. So making sure that even when you do case studies, that you put your hair up, that you put your uniform on. And in that way, you'll put on what I call your therapy head at the same time. This will make it easier for you to manage family and friends, and they'll take you a lot more seriously when you put your hair up and put your uniform on. Cleanliness is important. Nobody's going to be there to be checking that you change your towels, that you change your bedding. But at the end of the day, you know, coming into a clean treatment room is essential for your clients to feel um, in a nice environment. It's important that it's a nice environment. And I think sometimes complementary therapists are not so good at this side of the treatments. You know, we're very good at providing a natural ambiance and being caring, but we're not necessarily so good at providing a nice ambiance for the treatment to be in. Tidiness is the same. You know, you don't want to go into a messy treatment room that's full of stuff. You know, you want it to be tidy. And obviously the attitude of your therapist is important. You know, it is important to have a couple of minutes before every treatment, before your client arrives, just to center yourself, just to clear your mind, take a few deep breaths, calm yourself down, put into a box somewhere in your head out the way, a little pigeonhole, any problems and worries that you've got so that you can just focus on the client because we do have an exchange of energy between the client and ourselves. And even if somebody doesn't say something, you know, you can feel it sometimes if they're not in the room with you if, you, if you feel that their thoughts are elsewhere. So it is important to think about your professional appearance, your cleanliness, your tidiness, and your attitude towards the client, especially when you're self-employed and you're working on your own. ITEX Code of Ethics and um, guidelines with regard to appearance. They don't want you to have any body odor to make sure you have fresh breath, but at the same time, you're not chewing and sucking sweets. Um, smokers need to be particularly aware that if you breathe cigarette smoke on your clients, they will not come back for a second treatment. Neither will they come back if you're breathing onions or garlic all over them either. So, you know, please be kind to your clients and don't eat a lot of raw onion or garlic the night before you're doing treatments. Your fingernails should be short, manicured. Um, you can't have gel nails, you can't have long nails, and they will check this, and it will be part of your marking criteria in your exam. You're not allowed to wear any jewelry, except for um, small earrings, little stud earrings, and maybe a wedding ring. You're not allowed to wear nail varnish. Neither are you allowed to wear perfume because if your client doesn't like the smell of the perfume, it's considered unprofessional. So no perfume or aftershave for that matter. Your clients must also take off their jewelry. They can leave a wedding ring, but all other jewelry should be removed, including navel piercings. If you can't take the piercings out, then they do need to be covered with a plaster. Your hair needs to be clean whenever you do a treatment and it needs to be neat. I know that these um, quick knots in your hair are considered fashionable, but the examiners don't like it and they have been marking people down for messy hairstyles. So it needs to be tied back off your collar. So you can't have a ponytail that's on your collar. It's got to be off your collar and for the exam, it's got to be off your face. Um, not off your face on alcohol, but off your face. So fringes, um, you need to think about Alice bands and various ways to get your hair looking neat for the exam. Your uniform should be white or black professional uniform tunic. So for the body massage, we can't have Airtex t-shirts and we can't have um, sporty trousers. They have to be classic black trousers. Flat, supportive shoes. So Crocs are no good, trainers are no good, um, 
little pumps are all right, but they do have to be supportive for your feet if you're on your feet all day. Do make sure that your socks are black or white and they do match your trousers. In the summer, if you're going to wear cropped trousers, they have to be mid-calf. They can't be short shorts and they can't be long and we can't wear leggings. Everything's got to be clean and ironed and if you wear any white, please wear a camisole underneath it because we can't see any underwear. I have had um, examiners tell me that their client that had white trousers on their student, I could, she could see their frilly knickers through the white um, trousers. So that's considered for them to be unprofessional. So your manner and attitude during the treatment is very important, making sure you're friendly, warm, confident. It's not a good idea to tell the client that you haven't had many, uh, much experience or tell them that this might be their first paying client. You'd be amazed at how good you are at the treatment already and people will be surprised to hear this maybe after the treatment, but certainly not in the beginning. Make sure the conversation is client-centered and that you're not opening conversations while they're trying to relax. Making sure you use a combination of those open and closed questions, especially when you're trying to get people to go home. You want to be using closed questions, not open questions then. Your body language should be open and friendly with no barriers. So make sure your arms and legs aren't crossed and that you're not sitting behind a table. Making sure that you're confident in appearance and you're looking professional and that your client understands that everything's going to be confidential and discreet and that all the information you give them is going to be handled with discretion, ideally locked away in a metal cabinet and certainly not left on the kitchen table for anybody to have a look at. So we're going to go through ITEC's code of ethics and these are obviously while you're a student but some of them are, are ethics that you would guide by when you're qualified as well. And they recommend that you never discuss or criticize other clinics or other practitioners, which is obviously, you know, what comes around goes around. And if you talk about other therapists and put them down, then clients tend to think that you'll do the same to them when they leave. Do not make a medical diagnosis. Well, that's a very good thing. Um, if you have experience, maybe you nursing or some sort of life experience, there's nothing wrong with saying to somebody, well, I actually think that this could be so-and-so, but I think you need to go and see your GP and get it checked out. You know, it's um, up to you and it depends on your life experience, but we're not going to diagnose anything. Don't offer or promise cures or make false claims. Do not poach clients or treat clients that are currently receiving treatments from another practitioner for the same condition without their approval. This is a, a very ethical thing, really. It's about um, if somebody has backache and they've been going to a chiropractor to sort out their back and then they decide to come to you. Of course, everybody has a choice as to who they see for a treatment, but ITEC would consider it ethical to contact that chiropractor and say, Mrs. So-and-so wants to have a treatment with me. Can you see any reason why that would interfere with the treatment that you're giving? And most therapists would be quite delighted with that sort of rapport. But at the same time, you know, if somebody has a choice as to whether they have chiropractics or whether they have um, treatments with you. So do not discriminate on grounds of color, race, age, or religion. Well, discrimination is not a good thing, so that's um, taken as read, hopefully. Do not treat anyone who's under the care of a GP for a medical condition without permission. Well, that again is, is where self-indemnification comes along. Um, most people are being treated for something by their GP, even if it's um, pain relief for headaches or HRT, so you have to be sensible about these things. Do not treat unaccompanied minors under 16 whilst training. Well, that's um, a good rule of thumb. And when you are qualified, of course you can treat children, but you must have the parent or guardian in the room with you. You do have to watch your back these days. It's not enough just to get um, permission in writing. You should have the parent in the room with you. 
Maintain accurate records and insurance cover. Well, that's um, always a good idea. Don't gossip. Do not get personally or emotionally involved with your clients. Avoid unethical conversations like religion, politics, abortion, the royal family. The, the, the list is endless these days. But in my experience, as soon as you start giving an opinion, if your client brings up one of these subjects, you just can't get it right. So it probably is worth avoiding. Now, these ethics, as well as the contraindications, are guidelines for you while you are a student. Um, it is up to you and it's your judgment call when you are a qualified therapist. It's not necessary for you to have student insurance for doing your course, that's optional. You're covered by our insurance when you come to class. And when you do your clients, you must make them realize that they are taking responsibility really and liability for having the treatment with you. You are a student, you are practicing and they do need to understand that they take responsibility for having the treatment. They sign a consultation form and are therefore agreeing to you as a student being able to do the treatment and signing an indemnification if there is any contraindication. Having said that, um, you can go to CTHA, FHT, BABTAC, there's a lot of different insurance companies there that will offer you a student insurance at a reduced rate, usually about £30. And then when you have qualified and you join them, their professional body with their insurance, then they usually refund you that £30 and it comes off your first year's subscription. In the complementary therapy industry, you normally join a professional body. Usually insurance and the joining of the professional body are combined together. ITEC's professional body is CTHA, which is the Complementary Therapy Association. You then have the Federation of Holistic Therapists, or the FHT. That's the biggest one in the country. And then there's BABTAC, which is the British Association for Beauty Therapists and, and Cosmetology. Um, they're very good as well. These are probably the best three they do keep you abreast of all the changes in the industry so that you will get a magazine every month which will keep you abreast of all the changes. They usually have um, workshops and classes that you can attend at the exhibitions every year at Olympia and Excel. And they do have, the FHT in particular, have a lot of local groups that meet together and give support to their students. Sometimes also you get a free helpline for any legal issues you might find that you want checking out. So there's, there's quite a lot of support and advice that come from these professional bodies. But as I said, you do not need insurance while you're doing the course. But if you feel more comfortable having insurance, normally most professional bodies would then refund you your student insurance once you've actually started practicing and you have your qualification.